Hi, this is Nana Joshi. Today we are going to study trigonometric equations. Trigonometric equations are basically equations involving trigonometric ratios of unknown angles. So to solve a trigonometric equation, what we need to do is find the value of that unknown angle. If we talk about example, say for example sin x equals to 0 or 2 cos x plus 1 equals to 0 or sin square x plus cos x plus 1 equals to 0 or you can say 10x equals to root 3 etc. These, the, these, the, these all are the examples of trigonometric equations. Here we can see that the variable x is inside a trigonometric function. That's why they are called trigonometric equations. Now to solve a trigonometric equation simply implies that we need to find the value of this unknown angle it's over here. Now let's discuss about the quadrants. This is the horizontal line and this is the vertical line. If we start from here, here we have 0, here pi by 2, then pi, then 3 pi by 2, then 2 pi. So when we move from 0 to 2 pi, we say that we have completed a revolution. After this, when we will add 2 pi, when we will add pi by 2 in 2 pi, we will get 5 pi by 2, then here we will get 3 pi, here 7 pi by 2, 4 pi. Now when we have moved from 2 pi to 4 pi, we have completed the second revolution. Now we are starting the third revolution. 4 pi to 6 pi. So 4 pi, 9 pi by 2, 5 pi, 11 pi by 2, 6 pi and so on. This is how we can move on further. Now what we need to observe is that suppose we have, suppose we have the trigonometric equation sin x equals to 0. We know that sin x is equals to 0 when x is equals to 0 or pi or 2 pi or 3 pi or 4 pi and so on like this. Now from this diagram you can see that all these values appear on the horizontal line. All these values appear on the horizontal line 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi and so on. Now how to express the solution of this trigonometric equation in just one line? For that purpose, let's consider this horizontal line. If we need to rename this line, then what could be the name of this particular line? We can observe here that on this horizontal line we get multiple of pi only. And what kind of multiples they are? They are integral multiples. 0 into pi, then 1 into pi, 2 into pi, 3 into pi, 4 into pi, 5 into pi, 6 into pi, and so on like this. So can we name this line as n into pi, where n is an integer? So the name of this horizontal line is n pi, where n is an int integer. So on the horizontal line, we get integral multiples of pi. Similarly, let's consider the vertical line. Okay, after naming this line, to find the solution of this trigonometric equation, can we write x is equals to n pi, where n belongs to integer? Just because the values are integral multiples of pi, so the answer would be x equals to n pi. So from now onwards, we have to memorize that whenever sin x is equals to 0, the unknown angle will be equals to n pi, where n belongs to integer. Now if you look over here, z is itself an infinite set. It involves infinite numbers, the integers. So whenever you will put the value of n, you will get a solution. So 
if you want to say how many solutions we are getting over here so the answer will be infinite solutions so this single line x equals to n pi where n belongs to set of integers implies that a trigonometric equation has a trigonometric equation has infinite solutions this line shows that this trigonometric equation has infinite solutions now let's talk about cos x equals to 0 now we know that cos x is equals to 0 whenever x is equals to pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 or 5 pi by 2 or 7 pi by 2 and so on. The values can be obtained by using the suitable reduction formula. We will see that whenever x will be equals to pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2 and so on, the value of cos x will be 0. Mm -hmm. Now again we want to write these solutions in just one line. For that purpose we have observed the vertical line. These values appear on the vertical line as you can see over here. Pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2, 9 pi by 2 and so on like this. So if we have to name this line, now see here we are getting multiples of pi by 2. Pi by 2, here 1 into pi by 2, then 3 into pi by 2. 5 into pi by 2, 7 into pi by 2, 9 into pi by 2, 11 into pi by 2 and so on. So what kind of multiples are there? These are odd integral multiples of pi by 2. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. These are odd numbers. So here we can say that vertical line has odd integral multiples of pi by 2. Now how to represent it? To represent it, we know that an odd number can be taken as 2n plus 1. 2n plus 1 will represent an odd number. And odd integral multiple of what? Of pi by 2. So we will accompany it by pi by 2. 2n plus 1 into pi by 2 where n belongs to integer. This is the name of this horizontal line. So to represent the solution of cos x equals to 0, in just one line, we need to write x is equals to 2n plus 1 times pi by 2 where n belongs to integer. Again, this is infinite solution. This is representing infinite solutions. So, from now onwards, you have to remember that the name of the horizontal line is n pi where n belongs to integer because we get integral multiples of pi on this line and the name of the vertical line is 2n plus 1 times pi by 2 because here we are getting the odd integral multiples of pi by 2 on this particular line. On the horizontal line sin x is equals to 0 or you can say that if sin x equals to 0 then the answer is the whole horizontal line. Similarly if 10x is equals to 0 we know that 10x is basically what? Sin x upon cos x. But when 10x is equals to 0, it simply implies that sin x is also 0. So where is sin x 0? It is 0 on the horizontal line. That implies the solution of 10x equals to 0 is also x equals to n pi, where n belongs to z. Similarly, on the horizontal line, we have cos x equals to 0. And the answer is x equals to 2n plus 1 times pi by 2, where n belongs to z. Same is the answer for cot x equals to 0. That is cos x upon sin x equals to 0. So x will be what? 2n plus 1 times pi by 2, where n belongs to z. So you have to remember if sin x equals to 0, then x equals to n pi, where n belongs to integer. And whenever cos x is equals to 0, then x is equals to 2n plus 1 pi by 2, where n belongs to z. So in this whole chapter, our main motive would be to write the infinite solutions of trigonometric equation in just one line. So here we are going to discuss the solution of trigonometric equations in detail solutions of trigonometric equations in detail. There are two types of solutions. There are two types of solutions 
which we are going to discuss. The first type is the first type is principal solution. The first type is principal solution. For a trigonometric equation, principal solution is obtained when the unknown angle x lies in the interval closed 0 to open 2 pi. That is the first revolution. So if the x, if the value of x lies in this interval, that is in the first revolution, then we say that that particular value is principal solution. For example, if we talk about the equation sin x equals to 1 by 2, then we know that sin x is positive in two quadrants. Sin x is positive in two quadrants. First quadrant and second quadrant. This is the first quadrant and this is the second quadrant. Now, if we talk about sin x equals to 1 by 2, we know that 1 by 2 is obtained at the angle pi by 6. 1 by 2 is obtained at the angle pi by 6. So if this angle is pi by 6, then one solution is obtained at the angle pi by 6. So here we can say that x is equal to pi by 6 is one solution. Also, also this angle is pi by 6 in the second quadrant. But we need to find this angle starting from here, 0. So when we will move from 0 to this point, it will be pi minus pi by 6. This will be pi minus pi by 6. We have reached pi and then we have moved in clockwise direction. That's why we are doing minus over here. So it's going to be pi minus pi by 6. So what is pi minus pi by 6? Pi minus pi by 6 is basically the first value is pi by 6 and second is pi minus pi by 6 which is 5 pi by 6. So here you can see that pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6 both lie in this particular interval. Therefore, they will be called as principal solutions. So the principal solutions of sin x is equal to pi by 2 are pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. Let's consider one more example. The question is, find principal solution of cot x equals to minus root 3. Now we know that cortex is negative in two quadrants and the quadrants are second and fourth quadrant. In the second and fourth quadrant cortex is negative. Now we know that cortex gives the value root 3 when x is equal to pi by 6. At the value x equals to pi by 6 we get cortex equals to root 3. So, so here this angle is pi by 6 and this angle is also pi by 6. But we need to reach at these points from here only, from 0. So if we go like this, it will be pi minus pi by 6. So here the first angle would be pi minus pi by 6. Now for this value, we need to do first complete revolution up to 2 pi. Then we have to subtract pi by 6. So it will be, this value will be 2 pi minus pi by 6. So in the second quadrant, cortex equals to minus root 3 will give you x equals to pi minus pi by 6 and in the fourth quadrant it will give you 2 pi minus pi by 6. 2 pi minus pi by 6. So x will be equals to 5 pi by 6 and 11 pi by 6. So these two values are basically the principal solution. Why? Because these values lie in the interval 0 close to open 2 pi. Now let's discuss the second type of solutions. The second type of solutions and the most important one are general solutions. General solution is basically the infinite solution. When we are asked to write down the general solutions, basically we need to write the infinite solutions in just one line, which we have done earlier. But we will discuss it in detail over here. Now let's first learn 
what do we mean by infinite solutions? This is the horizontal line and this is the vertical line. If you talk about angles, here we have 0, pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2, then 2 pi, then 5 pi by 2, then 3 pi, then 7 pi by 2, then 4 pi, then 9 pi by 2, then 5 pi, then 11 pi by 2, 6 pi and so on. To reach the another value, we just add pi by 2 in the previous value. So here the cycle goes on like this. Now in the first revolution, let's take an example. Suppose we are talking about sin x equals to 1 by 2. We have just discussed over here that when sin x is equals to 1 by 2, we get two principal solutions. That is pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. Pi by 6 is in the first quadrant and 5 pi by 6 is in the second quadrant. Let's draw them. This angle is pi by 6 and this angle is also pi by 6. Now here you can see clearly when you start from 0 and we'll go through the revolution first. You have completed the revolution from 0 to 2 pi and have again reached this point, this line. While doing this first revolution, you have crossed these lines at the point this and the point this. At this point, the angle is pi by 6. At this point, the angle is pi by 6. And at this point, the angle is 5 pi by 6. So in the first revolution, you have got two solutions, which are pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. Now we know that the revolution doesn't end here. So if we go from 0 to 2 pi, we get answers as x equals to pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. Now we are going in the second revolution. The second revolution starts from 2 pi to 4 pi, closed 2 pi to open 4 pi. Now see what's going to happen. When you start from the second revolution, you will go like this. You have reached to this line again. In this second revolution, you have crossed these two lines over here. This point is basically, we have completed the revolution 2 pi, so it is going to be 2 pi plus pi by 6. 2 pi plus pi by 6. And this point is going to be 2 pi plus, this is 2 pi plus, how much? 5 pi by 6. So when we move from 2 pi to 4 pi, we get solutions as x equals to 2 pi plus pi by 6 and x equals to 2 pi plus 5 pi by 6. Similarly, when we will go further from here, from 4 pi to 6 pi, we will again cross these lines at two points. So this time the angles would be 4 pi plus pi by 6 and here it will be 4 pi plus 5 pi by 6. So in the interval 4 pi close to 6 pi open, we will get x equals to 2 pi, I'm sorry, 4 pi, 4 pi plus pi by 6 and 4 pi plus 5 pi by 6. Now see, this spiral will go on like this only. From 6 pi to 8 pi, then 8 pi to 10 pi, then 10 pi to 12 pi and so on. Similarly, these intervals will go on and we will get, in each interval we will get two solutions. So you can imagine from here that we will get infinite solutions. So this is how we will get infinite solutions because the spiral will go on continuously. So along this line and along this line we will get infinite number of points where the spiral will intersect. So we will have infinite solutions. 